Okay, perfect, man. So that's really good. Okay, that's really good. I'm gonna I'm gonna offer just a couple suggestions, and I think this is really gonna help you take your prospecting to another level. Okay, the first thing is something you'll have to just uh, work on as you make more calls. It's something that just won't happen overnight, and that is. So how many calls have you ever made, you think? Estimating. Like a thousand? No, probably 400. Okay, 400, great, great, great. So here's the thing, man, that is nothing, right? 400 calls is nothing. You haven't even begun to even start to understand how to make phone calls. You haven't even made a phone call, basically. See what I'm saying? Like you, you literally haven't even made a phone call. Now you've taken the first step, which is to actually pick up the phone and dial, and that's great, and that is amazing, and you gotta keep doing it. But understand that whatever happens in those first 400 calls, you can't even look at that data. That data is not even, that doesn't even exist. But let's talk about the 160, because you said about 80 or 90 were bad numbers or wrong numbers, right? Yeah, I'd say the majority were just absolutely no Okay, period. no, I understand. Probably a couple, maybe 20 to 25 answers, and then it was a mixture of either wrong number or okay. just... No, I understand. I understand. So listen listen to me. Are you using a dialer? Yes. Okay, so normally, here's the numbers across the board, and I, I'm talking about everywhere. Canada, uh, you know, New York, California, Miami, Alabama, Mississippi, Arkansas, across the board, okay, averages. You're going to talk to 10%. You make 100, you talk to 10. That's why you have a dialer. So you can blow through the numbers, you can blow through them and get to that good conversation. So when you tell me you, you've dialed 160, 10% of that's 16, and you're telling me you talked to 25, that is an incredibly great number of people that you talk to out of 160. So that is what everyone has to deal with. Now my numbers were even worse. When I was hand dialing and looking up on Spokio.com and stuff, my numbers were worse than 10%. But I built my business into a monster, and I had to dial by hand. It took me eight hours to dial 100 numbers. You can dial 100 numbers in an hour and a half with a dialer. So man, listen, please, please, please understand. I had to hand dial with my finger. You have it so made, bro. You have incredible data, far better than I had, and you have technology that lets you talk to people without even dialing with your finger. You just push a button and boom. Please don't complain about this situation. And your pickup rate of 25 people, which may or may not be right, you're probably talking off the top of your head, but that number, if it's anywhere, if it's anywhere around 20, let's say, is above average. Now here's where here's where we need to talk. Because when I'm evaluating a real estate agent's business, here's what I do. I look at how many listings, how many pendings and closings they have and all that. Okay, but that's kind of a real small part of the pie. I want to know that so I can kind of see what they did three months ago. Whatever you did three months ago is going to show up right now. So when I look at that, I'm thinking, okay, based on this, now I know what they did three months ago. But what I really want to know is, is how many calls you're making that tells me where your work ethic is. Then I want to know out of that, how many people you talked to. Out of that number, I want to know how many you connected with. So when I'm looking at these three numbers, I see number of calls represents to me work ethic. I recognize you as having a strong work ethic, even though I feel like you just started and 400 calls is nothing. We'll see if you continue, right? We'll, we'll know in three months, six months, a year, two years, if you're still making calls, then I can start to say, yeah, he's a hard worker. Because a lot of people do this for two months, eight months, six months and quit. They worked hard up to that point and then they quit. That's not a hard worker. You're a hard worker when you do this for decades. But that tells me you're a hard worker, that number, and then out of the people that you talked to, how many you connected with, that tells me where your communication skills are. So if you talk to 20 people and you got one email address, that tells me, okay, we're hitting our numbers of how many people we need to get in front of, and so we don't need to work on that part of our business. What we need to work on is our communication skill level of our business in terms of this verbal communication to make people feel comfortable with us. And it all comes from probably the fact that you're younger, you're new, you don't have experience, you know, that's uh, and you've only made 400 calls. So I mean, it's hard to, it's hard to, you know, to all of a sudden be this super confident, you know, experienced sounding real estate agent out of nowhere. So I get it. So is this circle prospecting you're doing? Uh, I actually recently 
really did the circle prospect before. I was just calling whatever new fizzbos I could find. No, I understand, but this 160, is this circle prospecting we're talking about? Yeah, yes. Do you want to role play real quick? Why not? Okay, all right, um, you ready? Yeah, ready. Okay, I'm the homeowner. All right, ring, 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 hello? Hey, uh, is this Mr. Kruth? Yep. Hey, Mr. Kruth, Adam Bilal, the EXP Realty, how you doing? I'm doing good, man, how about you? Hey, I'm doing good, I'm good, you know, just enjoying the weather, it's been getting a lot cooler recently. You liking this? Yeah, yeah. Nice, nice. Well, hey, didn't want to take up too much of your time here. I'll just call and let you know that we just had a couple new homes sold in the last month over in your subdivision. Didn't know if there was anything I could do for you. Not at the moment. Okay, hey, no problem. And, you know, I never really know until I call. But, hey, if you ever did do something, is there somebody, an agent or a friend that you would have gone with? Uh, no. No? Okay, hey, no problem. Well, you never know. Five, ten years, your plans could change and you might want to do something. Uh, I'd love to stay in touch with you if that's the case. What's your best email? Okay, perfect, man. So that's really good. Okay, that's really good. I'm gonna I'm gonna offer just a couple suggestions, and I think this is really gonna help you take your prospecting to another level. Okay. The first thing is something that you'll have to just uh, work on as you make more calls. It's something that just won't happen overnight, and that is. Your tone, the speed of the voice, and stuff like that is just too fast here, too slow there. The, it's just, it's just kind of clunky, right? And that's just something you gotta, you gotta smooth out. The more calls you make, the better you'll get. You need to pay attention when you're making calls and really listen to yourself, listen to them, and really try to get into a flow with the person, right? Also, there was a couple times where you like missed an entire word. You were like, I didn't know if there was something uh, could do for you, or something like that. You know what I mean? You know, yeah, let's say, fast. yeah, let's let's slow it down and say full sentences, full words, and pause in certain places. Like, listen to how I say the transition from the weather. Okay, listen to the pauses. Listen to how my my tone goes up. I accent certain things. It's like, okay, I got you. Well, look, I don't want to take up too much of your time today, but a house around the corner just sold. Didn't know if there's anything in the world I could do for you today. See how I'm like up, down, pausing here, pausing there, breaking it up. Does um, that like make it easier to process like for their brain? It does, it does. It makes it easier for them to process. It's soothing to their brain. They can process it correctly, it gives them time, you know, and then they're able to, to respond. So slow it down. Also, when you ask for the email, this is so crucial, man, and I believe that this is why you're not getting emails, this one single thing. When you ask for the email, you're saying, hey, you know, I'm sure five or ten years down the road you might change your mind or whatever, you know, I'd love to work with you, I'd love to stay in touch, what's your email, right? Right. Here's what you say. Look, I, I never know, you know, somewhere down the road, I'm sure you're gonna do something. I'd love the opportunity to work with you when that day comes. Would it be okay if I stayed in touch with you? Remember that line, dude. Write that down and scribe it in your brain. Would it be all right if I stayed in touch with you? Can I stay in touch with you? And then when they say yes, then say, great. What's a good email? So you make them commit to staying in touch before you ask for the email. Then you're gonna get it nine times out of 10 because if you just say, what's your email? They're gonna say, oh, no, 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 no. But if you say, hey, would it be all right if I just stayed in touch with you? Then they're like, sure. They're thinking, oh, he's just gonna call me from time to time, or he's he hasn't asked for any personal information or whatever, and you know, he seems like a nice guy. So they're gonna say, sure. And then what? Cool, great. What's a good email for you? Bam, dude. That I'm telling you, that part right there is gonna turn your entire business around. That that part right there. 